Uh, you came into Impact in 2018, but you've pretty much been in the wrestling business your entire adult life, haven't you? Yeah, actually, I've, I've never actually thought of it like that. <laughs> yeah, I've been in, I've, in two years, I will have been a part of wrestling for half of my lifetime. Yeah, you're 26 now, and, and obviously, you know, now that you, you've kind of been known for being part of the trio as the rascals you know but you're flying solo these days but i have to ask you how much fun was it to be a part of that group it was the most fun i've ever had in my life with my best friends <laughs> and and but like uh i'm sorry go I ahead love impact. i love impact for giving me that opportunity because i i don't know you know like not a lot of people get to do that with their best friends in real life. <laughs> that, was, that was the most fun I've ever had. And speaking of fun, how much fun was it for you guys to do those backstage vignettes when you were sitting in the smoke circle? Man, those were fun because they were always written by us. One, I remember uh, Jimmy Jacobs kind of approached us and was like, hey, this is what you guys are going to do. Now, the premise to be like behind it and your guys' state of mind is pretty obvious. I know nothing about that. So, I'm going to let you guys come up with this. <laughs> so, about 95% of the Treehouse segments were all, like, ours creatively. And that was really cool to have that trust in, like, handling our own creative freedoms. That was awesome to do. Well, I mentioned that, you know, you, you've been in the business for so long, but now at the age you were at and, and being basically a veteran at the age of 26 do you feel like you're hitting your stride right now i do i feel like now is me coming into my own more than i ever have a year ago i really thought that i was i thought i was there where i think i am now and maybe in a year from now i will do it even more but all i can do is compare it to like previous states of mind um like i thought when, when Bound for Glory happened, I really thought that I was, like, at the peak of being me. Like, this is, I, I have me figured out, and this is what I'm doing now. And I'd like to believe I flipped that again. And um, I might do it again in a year, but where I stand now, I feel like I'm tapping into my best and truest potential more than I ever have. What was that transition like for you to go from being a tag team, mostly known as a tag team performer, to being now a solo star? Um, it, was not, it wasn't a hard transformation at all because I had only been teaming with Des and Zach for about a year and a half on a regular basis before getting signed to Impact. So um, most of my 11 years has been me being solo so it was not a hard transformation most of my stuff is pretty much based around me being dependent on myself in the ring now obviously you mentioned your former partners they've moved on to another promotion what led to your decision to stay with impact don't leave a court unless you win a championship and is that what is it your eyes on the prize the impact world title uh, not necessarily, I mean, yes and no. Um, what means a lot to me is the X Division Championship, and I, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the World Championship. If I had an opportunity to win it and I did, you, you, you bet your ass <laughs> that thing that I'm going to hold that so close to my heart. But growing up, I was so drawn to the X Division style of wrestling, and all of my favorite wrestlers for Impact held the X Division Championship, and those were always my favorite matches. I, I sort of have this like special affinity for it in my heart that I kind of like it's like I'm, I'm not quitting until I get to like scratch that itch you know what I mean and uh, it's itching <laughs> <laughs> well you know the X Division's always been known for high flyers and you're certainly good at that but your ring style's kind of evolved a lot over the last few years uh, kind of talk about the transitions you've made because you you've kind of also added a lot more mat style wrestling to your skills that's been um, all of my training with Alex Shelley I was very fortunate enough to be able to watch him and favor him as a teenager and when he came to Impact Wrestling I remember one day he sat next to me while I was watching Des and Zach wrestle um, on one of the screens the monitors in the back and he asked me he said Trey can I sit with you and I said please and uh, we just started talking 
and he started asking me about myself and what I thought and how I felt about being at Impact. And I, I pretty I opened up to him pretty early about stuff, and I told him like, man, you know, like this is what I'd like to do differently. This is things I'm interested in. And then he he offered to mentor me, and I did not even hesitate to say I would love that seriously. So from there, I started keeping pretty close quarters with with Alex Shelley, and then uh, one day he found out that I have my own wrestling school, and he asked like, hey, would I? would it be okay if uh, Chris Haven and I come down and, and train and you know with you and that sparked everything so kind of like from the early parts of December to now I train with him regularly and it's um, I feel like I'm in the Harvard School of Wrestling now and I feel like I'm a better wrestler than I was in November and when I the wrestler I was in November thought he was a complete package so um, you never stop learning though and the moment you think you're done you should just pack your stuff and quit wrestling because that's just not the case and uh, you know speaking of high flying who gave you the nickname the Fresh Prince of Midair I actually came up with that all on my own <laughs> one day that's one great day I was working and uh, my trainer was working out with me and he had these headphones in and I had been going under the moniker Trigger Trey Miguel and it was right around the time of a mass shooting that happened in Vegas and so I didn't want to use the Trigger moniker anymore because I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything untasteful and I wanted to be sensitive to anyone that might be triggered by that word no pun intended but you know I just I really wanted to be sensitive to certain things and certain you know thoughts or feelings people might have just by that word because um, gun violence is a really sensitive subject in America especially when you're a victim of it so I didn't want to be that trigger for anyone so I dropped that name and I was actually at the time <clears throat> I was getting out of a relationship with a girl who always used to make fun of me and say I look like I reminded her of Will Smith and I was like how am I reminding you of Will Smith I don't even <laughs> understand that stupid and, one, and then I think like someone else said it one day too and then like I was thinking about it I was like man Will Smith is kind of that dude that's not the worst thing I could be in the world you know being a fresh prince of Bel Air that's kind of dope and then I literally when I said it like in my head I was like I thought like Fresh Prince of Midair like it, I don't I really don't know how I landed on it but it is like one thought just followed the other and I racked my waist and I ran up to my friend like yo I got it and he pulls his uh, beat by Dre headphones on and goes got what and I said the Fresh Prince of Midair and he was like that's it and then I remember the first time I got to work for House of Hardcore for Tommy Dreamer <clears throat> Tommy Dreamer comes up to me and he goes What's your name? I said, Trey Miguel. He goes, he said, no, like, what's your, what's your gimmick? What's your shtick? Like, you have a moniker? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm the Fresh Prince of Midair. And Tommy was, like, going to walk, like, he was, he was one foot away from walking away from me already, because I think he knew, I was, he, he thought I was about to say some stupid stuff. And I said that, and Tommy just stops and turns back, and he goes, the Fresh Prince of Midair? And I said, yeah. He goes, that is the best name I've ever heard <laughs> in professional ever. And I was like, we made it. <laughs> you know, you, you spoke about um, you know some of your trials and tribulations that you've had to go through. And my the first story that I wrote about you uh, was when you talked about some of your uh, battles with depression and anxiety. Um, but now you seem to conquer those. What what kind of advice would you give to young fans who look up to you who may be enduring the same things that you went through? Oh man, it's. Uh it's a battle, and one of the things I've learned more than anything is reaching out can save so much, like, heartache for you and others, depending on how bad your depression is. My depression was so bad, I had to start reaching out to people at complete random. The moment I got in a certain headspace, I just, I would call people and tell them, this is how I'm feeling, here's why I think I'm feeling this way, and I don't really know what to do about it, but even if they were stupid thoughts I would have, I would say, like, this is what I'm thinking, this is how I'm thinking about solving it. Right or wrong, this is just where my head went. And I had to keep communicating with people. The best thing I ever did was open up about my depression because then you start hearing other people's stories and then you hear stories that are hard to hear but are 
are harder than what you're going through, but you you see the perseverance that they've that they have, and you know, like you speak to someone that's made it through it, and then you you, you can see for yourself that it can get better and it does get better. But it's important to recognize the signs when you see them and to ask for help when it's needed. The worst thing that anyone can do going through depression is keep it in, and that's that's so much easier said than done because even now, I mean, I still battle with it. There's still so many days I wake up. I want to pull my cover over my head and not have to use my phone or not have to post on social media and not have to delete rude comments or read rude comments or try to beat rude comments in my head and not let them reign true. And it's it's a battle. But that's why like I, I like to take opportunities like this to let people know that it's not always better for me. And I'm not always 100%. I still deal with anxiety every single day. I have anxiety all the time and I'm open about it because I have to be and keeping it to myself I can't help myself and I've learned that but other people can so I don't hide it and I don't try to run from it the, the, I think that's the worst thing you can do for it I can I can tell you this that there are very few times that while writing a story I've broken down into tears and the story that I wrote about you I, I was crying as I was writing it because it was just so so honest you were so honest and open about everything and it, it was just you know that's that's the measure of a man you know it shows your heart and uh, I think it's one of the reasons why you be, become so successful now well, I appreciate that man I really do so I guess we gotta get down to business rebellions coming up Sunday April 25th and you got yourself a you got yourself a last man standing match against a guy you've known really well for a long time, Mr. Sammy Callahan. He's questioned your passion. What's your prediction? He's not going to stand up to look me in my eyes and say it to my face. This is not the case. I don't know where it ever became apparent or prevalent in anyone's mind that I have something to prove just because I came back. I didn't come back to, to prove anything to anyone aside from myself this isn't for Sammy this isn't for this isn't for my brother even this isn't for my dad this isn't for like this is for me I need to know it I don't need to show it to Sammy I mean he's, I'm going to it's going to be at his expense though not mine and finally before I let you go what would you say to all your fans out there and all the people who uh, just love you and follow you every bit of the hardship that we've gone through over this last year has driven everyone crazy and everyone's in a tough spot right now and I'm right there with you I'm going to take all of that anger and all of the misplaced frustration that everyone's dealt with in this past year and deliver it to Sandy Callahan for everyone that's supporting me Trey I want to thank you for your time and I, I really admire you I think you're a fine young man and it's great to see you having so much success now thank you so much I really appreciate that